go. Dylan Blakesley versus Joe Penafel. Joe Penafel comes out with a little jump kick. Sizing each other up. Trying to get a feel. I really expect Joe Pinnacle to be explosive. Yeah, uh, Joe just kind of taunting him a little bit, telling him to bring it on. Blakesley lands a nice little left hook. 35 champ. Sorry, guys. I'm back. Mr. Chamali here. Joe was our 135 champ uh, at our last event, and uh, he wanted to go pro. He had a very big career as an amateur. He was 6-1. Um, always puts on a nice, exciting show. Nice kick um, landed. I don't know a lot about, about Dylan, but he's from uh, Washington. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know much about the scene up there, so I don't know how good he's going to be. He was 8-5 and five up there. Um, so I guess we'll find out here shortly. I was saying uh, from what we've seen of Joe in his amateur fights, you know, we can expect some explosive. Very explosive, very uh, unorthodox, crazy. You don't know what this guy's going to do next. Evident by the hair. Yeah, I have never seen him do that. <laughs> nice takedown, a trip for Pinnafel. Blakesley looks pretty comfortable. Full guard. Blakesley doing a good job of uh, pushing off the hips of Pinnafel, keeping him back. Yeah, Joe, you know, Joe isn't afraid to lay right here and win a fight. Uh, the beginning of his amateur career, a lot of his fights were decisions, and it was big takedowns, and then he would kind of just grind, uh, hit him in the face a little bit. You know, right now he could pass the guard. The guard's wide open, um, but he's not interested. Landed by Penafel and <laughs> Blakesley up kicked. Yeah, Penafel, what I'm concerned with Penafel is how much energy he puts out. Um, that screen, you know, just there's little things that will fuck up your cardio. That's just a waste of energy. Oh, big right. Big yeah. traded. Yeah, big right hand. Like I said, Joe is crazy, man. All right, oh. coming back with that right, that rear right hook. After ducking the, the right hook of Blakesley. He, he needs to get out of that center line more. Blakesley's doing a really good job here, man. He's, he's um, been fighting really well. Just the takedowns are really getting the better of him. Joe's back on top. Like I said, he was a very good wrestler in high school. On that chest to chest, he did a good job of falling into. Yeah, look at those hips, man. He's just, he's just bucking him down and making sure that uh, Dylan knows that he's not going anywhere. Little cut and uh, mouse under the eye, left eye of Blakesley. And Pinnacle made his uh, bad intentions for Blakesley known yesterday at the weigh-ins. Yeah, you know he was very, uh, he was very uh, colorful and made sure that he knew that this was going to be his night. Uh, he actually told the entire other corner that he was going to knock them all out. They're all getting knocked out. Uh, <laughs> if you ain't from Orlando, you ain't winning tomorrow. Um, all this and uh, yeah, so it's always good when you see that kind of blood, bad blood boiling before a fight. You know it's gonna be a good one. At the same time, though, sometimes they want to play it safe then because they don't want to be um, they don't want to be that guy that got told what was gonna happen and then it happens. Or if they said what was gonna happen, they end up losing by being too aggressive. So the goat, but not the greatest of all time. Yes. <laughs> You know, he's just being patient here. He's winning the round. He's yeah, probably he's recovering his cardio a little bit. You got to watch out with up kicks. Yeah, last time he stood in there. There you go. He's got to put those hips in. You know, I actually train with, with Joe um, on Mondays a lot um, over at Paul Rodriguez's school, legend in the sport here. Um, and Joe's got really good hips, man. You just got to use them. And, and Dylan's doing a great job of doing these up kicks, putting them off balance, making Joe not feel comfortable. You know, you catch one of those heels to the chin, and there's a good chance that you'll uh, – end up going night-night. Here's Joe with a good side control position, but Dylan, Dylan's very smart. He knows what he's doing. Um, he's just going to keep moving and create another position, create another hole. And like you said, you know, Joe's winning around from this position. He's 
dishing out a little bit of damage uh, doses. Oh, he gets the full mount. Oh, well, that was an elbow to the back of the head, but luckily the kid's hand was back there, so it didn't actually hit him. I saw uh, our ring announcer has a little mic flag with it on it. That looks really sharp, too. Yeah, yeah, you know, stepping it up in all apartments. I wanted to make sure no details were missed for this event, so. Well, the fighters are delivering, too, on their Yes, side they are definitely showing up tonight. Some great fights. You know, Joe's got to be really careful. Dylan actually is, is, is a pretty fast dude as well. And um, he's got a little bit of power in his hands, so you don't want to keep your hands down too long. And as the fight carries on, you get a little more tired. Your reaction time slows down. Yeah, for these pro fights, these five-minute rounds make a big difference in cardio and just game plan. What's really funny is that um, big overhand right. Joe there. is usually the one pu pushing the action, and Joe's kind of letting him keep the middle of the cage. He's landing lots of really sneaky punches. Where he's like, he'll he like slip one, and then as he's moving away, it's like, psh. Yeah, you know, um, that's what little guys do. And in, in addition to that, Joe's super fast, so he gets away with that a lot. And then um, right there, he guy got over aggressive and committed. He got aggravated with Joe's movement and ended up um, giving it the takedown. I don't think I don't think Joe's really um, scared of that, but it's definitely where Dylan wants to be. Yeah, Blake Sleeve doing a good job of uh, trying to keep Pinnacle at bay. Pinnacle beat doing some mean, nasty stuff grinding his forehead into his face and his chin. Staying at the commentating booth is why I don't do it. You know, Joe's doing a good job putting his head right under the guy's chin, being mean, being aggressive, throwing some strikes in the grappling. That's what's real important here. Not forgetting it's an MMA fight. Dylan's pretty active off of his back, man. He, he, he's he getting Joe back in good positions and, um, you know, making sure that Joe's not just dominating positions and then uh, getting up is the, definitely the hard part. Those up kicks, though, are so nasty. Joe is landing a hard right hand on him almost every time. Got to be careful, though. All it takes is one of those hills to land on the chin as you're coming in. You know, but uh, I, at the same time, people don't expect someone to just recklessly jump in like that. So, again, it is uh, definitely not an easy style to prepare for. Is it a hard transition for guys as they go from amateur to pro to utilize all those new weapons they have in their arsenal? You know, like there's elbows and uh, you know, knees to the face and stuff like that that they can do that they couldn't do at the amateur level. And so sometimes, you know, we've seen a couple of debut fights where it's like they just are not really working for those extra really nasty strikes. Yeah, you know, um, I don't think that that's the case. I think that you're either mean and you're a fighter and you want to do mean shit to people. You want to elbow them. You want to you just be aggressive and, and, and just hurt somebody or you're just not a fighter. I mean, I, I think that's all there is to it that, um, you know, as you're an amateur coming up, the whole time you're thinking about, oh, I can't wait to throw elbows. Oh, I can't wait to do this. I can't wait to throw me in your face. And, um, I think
think if you limit, don't use those tools. And it's just that you're not you're not real scrappy and mean. You know, you want to be mean. Spinning back elbow miss. Joe did a good job at level changing there. Um, usually the guy on the cage gets taken down. But that time, Joe uh, was very very quick to uh, hit the takedown. And here we go for round three. It's pretty much been a one-sided affair, um, but you never know. Pinnacle's been dominating position. Uh, Blake has been doing a heck of a job of uh, trying to keep him at bay, not taking too much damage. Ooh. Maybe just looking for a spot, because they both have still got a lot of juice in the tank right now. I don't think Joe does. I think, I think Dylan's done a good job at conserving it, but once he goes to the ground, I don't think he does. He's trying to land big shots. Joe's got to be smart here. Joe's got to put his hands up. Uh, move. Oh. Nasty kick up in the armpit. Yeah, but it was his toes. That, that couldn't have, have felt good. Um, you know, all I can say is these guys are delivering a really good fight. They're throwing down. They're scrapping for sure. It, it, you know, Dylan sees him dipping that head. Expect to see an uppercut here soon. Every time he rounds up that right hand, see, he drops the head every time. Gotta, gotta watch out. And Joe is just a madman, man. It just always scares me when you see that because you never know. Those gloves are small. It's easy to get one slipping through. Oh, that was a nice uppercut from Joe himself, actually. Ooh, big nice right, cross. Man. Another one. I think his mouthpiece is out. Joe's mouthpiece is out. Joe does, nice not, Joe does not care. Larry's going to break the action, put the mouthpiece back in. That's not him. Oh, and Larry does not see whose mouthpiece is out. And here we go. We're oh, back. and Hands on the knees for Pinnacle. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is the third round, man. This is his pro debut. You know, but he has great wrestling. And that's the thing is that wrestlers can wrestle for days. It's not, they don't get tired. You know, still, though, man, it's a lot of time in this fight. Dylan's done a good job off of his back. Joe's really tired. Um, there's some stuff starts to get sloppy. You start trying to hold positions too long, and you never know. Joe's continuing to just maintain control, doing mean, nasty stuff. That, that up kick from Blakesley is, is maybe the nastiest thing he's doing. Oh, Ooh, big right that was a big right hand. You've got to be careful here, man. He, he, you know, I keep saying that, but, man, this is just his style. He likes to just be reckless, coming there, throwing bombs and what lands and lands, and, you know, he'll, he'll take some to give some. I'm really impressed with Dylan, though, man, because Joe is no slouch. I, like I said, I haven't haven't done a lot of research on Dylan, but Joe's definitely a tough dude. And he's giving Joe all he wants. Again, we're just staying in this dominant position, doing a good job. He doesn't even want to pass half guard. Um, half guard's actually a, a little bit easier position from top to hold and to do stuff with than um, you know a side mount. Even even a full mount, sometimes you get bucked off. You're really sweaty. And did a good job here. Now he's actually trying to pass. He's got one arm pinned. Does he have the underhook? He has the underhook. If he passes, there'll be a lot of trouble here with the crucifix. Yeah, as we saw in the previous fight, uh, whenever a fighter was able to get into that position, it's very dominant. There's nothing really going there from, on the left arm. It's not underneath uh, Pinnacle's chin or anything. I think we just heard the 10-second clacker. Pretty easy call there. As this round, as this round comes at an end, uh, it's been a one-sided thing, but again, man, Dylan on his feet, he looks really good. Uh, if he could have just avoided those takedowns, this fight would have been a completely different fight. There's a lot of toughness on display from Dylan. Man, that spinning elbow he threw earlier was so nasty. Um, it was just kind of thrown out of frustration, I think. I think he was irritated that, uh, you know, look at Joe digging in his chin and talking to him in his ear. Um, he's just, he's being mean, man. He's just being mean. Again, Dylan's staying active. He's moving. That wasn't the 10-second clacker earlier, I guess. And um, Joe looking to pass. Dylan's got to be careful. The, the head and arm chokes there. Ooh, 
elbow. The elbow pressure just looks nasty. Yeah, yeah, he's doing a really good job. It's being mean, but look at Dylan, man. He's just staying in there. A lot of guys can't deal with this kind of grind for three rounds. He's defending hard. Yeah, yeah, he's doing a really good job of keeping that guard. Ten Very seconds. Ten seconds. Expect something crazy from Joe. And it starts with a slam. And he's just trying, Dylan's trying to hold on here. He, doesn't he knows. Strikes. Welcome back, Sir Richard. We've had a fantastic, uh, hey. Working now, huh? Yeah, welcome back, man. We've had, hey, I had to go away for a little while. We started this pro card. A couple of things happened. It did. <laughs> we started. Good things. Good things, good times. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a final decision. The winner, by unanimous decision, Joe Pettifield! Yeah, that was kind of a no-brainer. Joe did a fantastic job of controlling that pretty much every single round. Uh, yeah, uh, shout out to Dylan, though. No doubt. A lot of people uh, didn't think he was going to do as well as he did. And he did a great job of uh, keeping Joe at bay from really uh, give, putting on more damage because yeah. he had some really good positions on him, and he fought like hell the entire time. 